mathematician Sway and come back to now video. We are going to start deriving the first exponentiation rule today. Last time we have talked about a mistake that often occurs when dealing with exponentiation and today we would like to see what happens if we don't add two things together to exponentiations, potencies, whatever you would like to call it, but rather multiply them together. Today, same base, different exponents. Meaning, what we are going to do today is we are going to take a look at some base a to the nth power times a to the mth power. Adding exponentiations together doesn't do any good. We need binomial theorems later in the game. But for now, we would like to take a look at the multiplication because it uses it yields a pretty nice result. Now, um, I'm also terribly sorry I have the hay flu at the moment. The hay fever struck me pretty badly this morning and this is why my nose is a bit... <laughs> but doesn't matter, we are going to do this. So, a to the nth power times a to the mth power. Pretty abstract, am I right? Let us take a look at a certain example and let's see what we can derive from this example. So, as an example, let's take a look at, um, let's say, 7 squared times 7 to the third power. And now we are simply going to make use of the verbal definition yet again of exponentiation. Meaning 7 squared is nothing but 7 multiplied with itself exactly two times. Meaning this is 7 times 7. This has been the first part. Times, okay, 7 cubed is nothing but 7 multiplied with itself ex exactly three times, am I right? So 7 times 7 times 7. Hey, that's not even too bad, right? Because now we have 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 makes 5. This is 7 multiplied with itself 5 times. Now reversing the verbal definition of exponentiation gives us 7 to the 5th power. Okay. So that's simplified quite nicely. So what we can gather from this is we have multiplied two exponentiations with the same base together and got out the same base, just a different exponent. So let us gather this here. So we have the base a yet again, if we keep this kind of abstract. But now two and three turned into five in some way. Huh. How are two, three and five connected? Well, if I give you two apples and place three apples next to it, you get, whoa, five apples. What a coincidence, works out. So this is nothing but seven to the two plus three power. Okay, so this is seven to the power of two plus three then. Meaning, what we do? We multiply exponentiations with the same base and different exponents together. And all we get out on the other side is the same base gathered together just to the power of n plus m. Yeah. It is what it is. And this rule holds for each and every number that you have here, n being equal to negative 3 and m being equal to 112, for example, all right? So if you add those together, uh, multiply those exponentiations together, you just end up with the same base and, well, those exponents added together, basically. Let us go through another example and let's see um, if you can wrap your head around all of this. So let us take a look at, for example, 3 times 3 squared. Hmm, that is weird. Baba, Baba Flemmy, you just said that we are multiplying exponentiations together, but now there's just 3. Remember episode 1 of exponentiation. If we have just a 3 standing there, this is 3 multiplied with itself exactly once. Okay, so 3 is nothing but 3 to the first power. Ah, now it makes sense. Now we have good stuff. So we have the same base. So this is 3, same base. And what we do, we take the exponents 1 and 2 and add them together. 1 plus 2 gives us exactly 3. This is 3 cubed. All right, worked out. Nice, right? And this is basically all you need to know about this. But here's one more really, really cool um, consequence of this theorem. I said before that this theorem uh, or this rule basically holds for all n and m's that we have up here. It also holds for zero. Let us expand our knowledge 
four decays where we have something raised to the zero of power because we don't know what that means yet. This is just a number multiplied with itself zero times. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever right now, but it will in a second. Let us take a look at, yeah, let us take this example once again. Three to the third power. Let us just take a look at the exponent for now. This three up here in the ex exponent, if I have three apples and I don't place any other apple to it, I still have three apples. So this three up here is going to stay a three, even if we were to add a zero to the exponent. Okay, I hope you agree with me. Three is the same as three plus zero. And now we are just going to reverse that rule that we have here. Three to the three plus zero of power is nothing but three to the third power times three to the zero of power. So this is 3 to the third power times 3 to the zero of power. Ah, okay, maybe you can see something. Either you can calculate it now or you can see what it's going to be. Now we have 3 cubed is nothing but 3 cubed times 3 to the zero of power. How can we get back to 3 cubed if we multiply 3 cubed by some other element? Well. It's, it's got to be one, all right? If I only have one apple, then I only have one apple. You can also divide both sides by three cubed. It's not equal to zero. Then you have, for, for example, um, 27 over 27. This is going to be one if you take a look at the rational numbers yet again, fractions. Meaning three to the zero of power, we can conclude is thus exactly one. And this rule holds for all bases A, that we raise to the zero of power. It's going to be one, except for a being equal to zero. We don't want a to be equal to zero. This is something that we don't want because it's gonna give us some slight problems. Later when we uh, talk, talk about limits and analysis, blah, 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 it's going to make more sense. You can also define it to be one, but for now it's an undefined thing if it has zero to the zero of power. Another video is going to come out on that um, when we talk about yeah this stuff later in the series. But for now, two things you might want to take away from this video. a to the n times a to the mth power is a to the n plus mth power and a to the zero of power is exactly equal to one if our a is not equal to zero. And this is it. There's not much more to do here, but it's extremely important. Especially this fact is going to be really important when talking about fractions, expanding fractions, etc. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, recommend the channel. If you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more, buy the series I created. Check out the main channel, support the channel on Patreon. Recommend it to your classmates, to your teacher, blah, 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 if you do enjoy this content and maybe they might get a kick out of it this whole content here on this channel. Other than that, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao!